Welcome. I'm Edward, training and technical sales manager with RPB. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to connect the PX5 to your Z-Link Plus welding grinding respirator with the breathing tube. We'll also show you some simple donning and doffing recommendations, as well as some cleaning and storage recommendations to help you in your use of the Z-Link. First, we want to attach the threaded end of the breathing tube to the inlet on the back of our Z-Link. You want to make sure that that is threaded up tight so that that is a sealed connection. It's important we start with attaching the breathing tube to the Z-Link as that's a threaded connection and it'll save the breathing tube getting twisted up. Once that is attached, we can then attach the bayonet end to our PX5. Again, we want to make sure that that is a tight connection and it's locked in position. That way it's a sealed connection and it's not going to come loose in use. With that now set up and connected together, we can then go ahead and turn our PX5 on. I recommend you check the indicators. Make sure that you're not noticing any low battery warnings or that the filters are too clogged. If you're seeing any amber lights or any red lights, that is a sure indication that the battery would need to be recharged or filters would need to be replaced. Once you've got the PX5 on and running, you can then take that and take the belt apart and attach that around your waist. You can then do the belt up so that it's snug around your waist and comfortable and that everything is in the right position. Again, I've got the PAPR running so that I've got air coming into my respirator before I start to don that. Now I can take the respirator and simply don that by pulling my head through the bib on the shroud. You'll also notice that there is a cinch on that bib that I'll be doing up once I've got the respirator on to ensure that there is always positive pressure within that respirator. I can then adjust the shroud as I need. Also, popping that visor open just to help with me being able to communicate. I can then come up underneath the shroud and adjust the ratchet on the inside to ensure that is snug. If I need, I can also adjust the air vent on the inside. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'm then ready to drop that visor down and I'm now getting the respiratory protection that I need. When it comes to doffing this respirator, you want to make sure you carefully lift the helmet up and away from you as the wearer. That way, if there is any dust that has settled on the top of the respirator, you're not allowing that to come and eventually fall into your eyes. So you want to make sure you're moving the respirator up and away, preventing any of that dust getting into your eyes or your breathing space. With the respirator now off, we can now take the PAPR off. And before we go and turn that off, you want to first just check the indicators, making sure we're not got any flat batteries or clogged filters. If you're seeing any indication that filters need to be replaced or batteries recharged, you would then do so. Once we're comfortable with that, we can then press and hold the on off button. That'll turn that PX5 off. And this unit is now ready for cleaning and storage. So when it comes to cleaning your PX5, you can simply wipe the exterior of this down with a mild detergent and water and use a disinfectant if you needed to from a cleanliness standpoint. 
It is an IP65 rated system, so it's not going to cause any damage to the unit if it were to get used outside in inclement weather or getting washed down with any mild detergent and soap. Also, it's recommended that you check the filters after each use as well. Simply by prying that locator off, you can then inspect your pre-filter. If you're seeing any signs of dirt uh, or any discoloration, you want to simply replace that. That's going to ensure that you're maximizing the life of your main P3 filter behind that. If you're seeing any discoloration on your main P3 filter, or you're seeing any indication that it needs to be replaced from a loading point of view, simply replace that. For the belt, if you do need to replace the belt at all, the belt holder can simply be removed by lifting up on the clip at the bottom and rotating that belt holder to remove that from the PX5. You can then unthread the belt if you needed to from the belt holder and replace just the belt. To reattach that, you simply locate the arrow to the unlock position on the PX5 and then rotate that into the locked position where it'll clip into position and be ready for next use. You can then disconnect the breathing tube from the PX5 and from the Z-Link. When it comes to cleaning your Z-Link, you can check the visors for any scratches or any wear and tear and replace them if needed. It's very important that you do regular inspections of your respirator and replace any parts that are showing any signs of wear and tear or damage. You can also inspect the inside of your respirator for cleanliness and replace parts or wash them as needed. For the shroud, you can simply remove that if you needed to replace it or you could remove it for cleaning if you needed to as well. When it comes to storing the respirator, it's very important that you're storing it away from the environment that it's getting used in. It's recommended to store them either in a carry bag or in a locker so that it's away from the environment that it's used in so that it's clean and ready for use the next time you come to use this. Thank you for taking the time to watch this quick video. If you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. Thank you.